Hi, this is Jeff Osler. I'm with Hi-Fi Live. I appreciate you coming here to watch this video. Hi-Fi Live uh, is gonna be a channel that deals with all things audio and uh, high-end audio for the most part, but all things audio, it won't just be about records or about um, digital files. Uh, that's part of it because it's part of the music, but it'll have a lot to do with equipment and different gear that, that is used. It will have to do with uh, cleaners, uh, cables, um, visiting people and visiting different uh, manufacturers who I've known through the years and going to go out and not just FaceTime or not just do a, a, a video thing, but I'm going to go out to their facilities and interview them. The question that uh, started all this and got me going, I've settled down a little bit from last night, but this issue with MoFi is still very, I mean, it's very disturbing. And when you watch the video that Mike es uh, Esposito did when he went to uh, MoFi's headquarters, they seem to, the, the engineers that is, seem to give explanations as to why they needed to go put a digital step and the reason that they thought would be very practical and pragmatic is that they have to take a, a tape player out to do the tape and then they're going to capture the digital copy of the master tape because they won't let the master tape out. And you know, that really sounds good. And I've heard other people say it. Problem is, is in reality, it just doesn't, it just doesn't wash now, does it? And there are some uh, reasons why it doesn't. And uh, some of it has to do with other records. And some of them are here. We have Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd is a, uh, not just a little boutique, not just a small name. But as you'll notice, it said the, uh, it was remastered and heavy vinyl. But if you look down further, it was remastered from the original analog tapes by James Guthrie and Joe Plant and Bernie Grunman. Well, somehow they did it. I don't know how they, not Pink Floyd tapes, that's gotta be pretty hard to get, but they did it. A number of years back, we also had Jimi Hendrix and they did a whole series on the on Hendrix. Now, not all of them could they get uh, the original master tapes for, but where they existed, they did. Uh, this is the all analog mastering from the original monophonic master tapes. Again, we have uh, all analog mastering from the original two track master tapes by George Moreno and here we have an Electric Ladyland all analog remaster from the original two-track master tapes. And we know, uh, because I have behind me, we, we have uh, another high-end uh, offering, a, a UHQR, which was put out from uh, Chad Cassim's Acoustic Sounds, and he had the master tape. Uh, I found master tapes and the people who were able to, groups or, or uh, people who had recorded and who you could still find their master tapes for or get them and, and to obtain them were, here's some of the list, Stevie Ray Vaughan, The Doors, Nat King Cole, Miles Davis, Leonard Skinner, Pink Floyd, Dave Brubeck, Jimi Hendrix, The Beach Boys, Creedence Clearwater Revival, Willie Nelson, Henry Mancini, Elvis, Bill Evans, Julie London, Duke Ellington, Dean Martin, Aaron Neville, J.D. Souther, Roy Everson, Harry Belafonte, Tony Joe White, and Harry Nelson, Steppenwolf, Muddy Waters, Otis Redding, Duke Ellington, Holly Cole, Jeff Beck, Sarah McLaughlin, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, Cat Stevens, Ted Nugent, Janice Ian, Amos Lee, John Coltrane, Nina Simone, James Gang, Joe Walsh, Linda Ronstadt, Leon Russell, Huma Skella, Ben Webster, Ella Fitzgerald, Joan Baez, Oscar Peterson, and in addition to that, we have all of the uh, issues. That every one of those there, as far as I know, are all from Master Tapes. Of course, we have Blue Note that, that sponsored and said, okay, you can use the Master Tapes, but they show them to you. And we know because we've, we've seen so many of the others, but here's, here's some of the, the people that they put out on one step. I have a one step of Marvin Gaye. And then I had this, and this was the direct to analog mastering by Kevin Gray. Now, I don't know what their excuse was, why they didn't want to use the master tape for Marvin Gaye. I guess they're not as good at getting them as others, but this one sounds really good. And I, I want to restore a little bit. Michael Ludwig out of Germany did shootouts and he does comparisons. And in many of his comparisons, in fact, most of them, 
when the MoFi has been introduced with any other uh, analog recording, the MoFi usually loses out. And this is one case where he heavily questioned uh, and, and had to say that the, uh, what, he, what he concluded was there was magic here because if the other was taken from a master tape and it was put on a 12 inch disc, there's two of them at 45 RPM, and yet this one still sounded better, there's, there's got to be something going on. But that is what happened. We had, uh, we know that, that uh, in the Blue Note series, the classic vinyl, that these are taken from the original analog tapes. Uh, Kevin Gray's done this at Coherent Audio. Uh, but I found this one also. It says it's mastered from the original analog tapes. And by the way, none of these cost very much. Even, even the Jimi Hendrix, I think the most they were, double was $30. And if you get the uh, Pink Floyd all analog mastering of the wall, uh, I think it was $42 is all. Here's another one. Sony has a uh, music on vinyl series that they do. And most of those are digital. But it just so happens when they're not, they'll, they'll put it in here. It's an original and an unedited version. It's mixed from the original three track tapes on an original Presto tube tape recorder. I did that without putting my glasses on. But there it is, here's Mingus. So why they didn't do the Mingus, uh, uh, um, and they had to go to a digital step, I don't know. Uh, I guess you could say here Sony, Sony has better ways of getting it, but given all the names that I just gave you, it's, it gets crazy. Uh, another thing to consider is that, uh, well, we'll do that later. We have, I have two titles here, and I could have brought out uh, many, many more. But here are two titles. Uh, one in particular was done as a, as a one-step. This is the Yes, Fragile. And these uh, had the same process done. They basically took from the master tapes, and they digitized, and they, they put it in at a very high rate. I don't know if it was DSD or DXD how they, they do this, but Steve Wilson does a process, and then uh, he puts these albums out, and they're remastered, and uh, they've gone through uh, the digital, like Mobile Fidelity's claiming they have to do, and yet these turn out fantastic. Uh, this Aqualung I listen to, I listen to this record. But yes, all of these others that I've shown are ones that I listen to. Uh, the only other MoFi that I probably listened to this, and I listened to one other that was uh, before it was Mark Cohn. I'll listen to Mark Cohn because it's uh, still the best copy of it. And I, I don't know whether it was digital or not. It, it's just the best copy I have of that Mark Cohn. I have it on CD. But here we have a recording. It was done digitally. It was recorded digitally. And so I heard a lot about this. And I thought, well, take a... Anyway, if, if you're somebody who believes in analog and you want stuff analog when, when there's only a digital recording, this is a big step for you to buy a record of it because if you're an audiophile like me and many others, you go, well, if it's done digitally, why don't, why don't I just listen to it through digital means and through my DAC? But this one actually turned out well, and I have to say, uh, I, I don't have a high-res recording uh, of this, but compared to the CD, uh, this is far superior. And this is a great recording, but there was no subterfuge here. And I didn't pay $125 for it. Uh, at the time, I believe this was $55 that I paid. Uh, another case in point, we had two. And now when they have records that, that, that they can do, and this is one of the shootouts that they did, was one of my favorite records is Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Uh, this copy is done by ORG. Same thing, Acoustic Sounds, uh, Chad Cassim's Analog Productions, um, a number of other names that, that, that they do these with. But this is done from the analog tapes. It says so right here. Uh, mastered from analog tapes by Bernie Grundman. So we know that was direct. This was one, now we know it wasn't. We know it wasn't. Now, if you just listen to this, you sit down and you listen, yeah, that, that sounds pretty good. Until you have something to compare it to. As soon as you compare it, again, Michael uh, Ludwig, or Michael 45 as I know him, he did the comparison on this and they talked and they, they said that these are different. They said that you may like this for different reasons. Some of it, I think, had to do with dynamics, which is really what the only th reason you would do digital, in my opinion, over others is when you need dynamics. Uh, but this one out, I mean, 
in that case, this went out. The other thing that, to keep in mind is when people were collecting lo-fi, mobile fidelity, uh, because they had such an elite position um, within the audio world, uh, they were able to pre-sell a lot of their albums, and in particular of late. Uh, the model that, that they've done, and because of COVID, and just because we have new generations and younger kids that have gotten into collecting vinyl, and uh, they found out that if you collect mobile fidelity, it was good because it's going to keep its value and it would increase in value. And who doesn't want that? But if it's going to increase in value and it's good, you may not want to open it like I didn't open these. I mean, I haven't opened them. I don't know. They may be the best. I, I think that these are all actually from the master tape and I still haven't opened them. But most of my mobile fidelities that are behind me, they don't get very much play. Um, I don't know whose does. I did play this a lot. This was an SACD that came out way back, I think in like the year 2000 actually. And uh, you know, it was an SACD, I thought it was really good. I don't think that this compares to this. The, the record's much better. Uh, the other comment that came across in the um, Washington Post was there were some people still complaining about vinyl records and said, you know, I can't stand them because they take me out of listening whenever I hear a pop or you know, there's a click or there's something that goes on that way, you know, if there's dust or debris on the record. But it makes me wonder if the people who are making those comments have actually heard any modern turntables with a good cartridge and especially some of these records. I mean, they're new. Um, you just don't have that problem. I'll put on records for people here all the time and they think it's actually a CD that I put on and that I'm playing because that's just how they relate but the surface noise is basically gone. Um, Chad was able to do a miracle on this, uh, kind of blue. We have another one we could compare. Uh, this kind of blue compared to the one that Mobile Fidelity did, this one, in my opinion, is so far superior, it's, it's just crazy. I mean, I don't know how good of a system you'd have to have to tell. The other thing I thought of is they mentioned a lot about A-B tests and, and uh, you know, the people probably can't tell the difference. And I, I, I thought about that somewhat. And I was at a concert many years ago. And on my way home in the car, I turned a, on the CD of the, the same group that was in concert. I, I, I can't remember who they, they were right now. But anyway, I turned them on. And magically on my way home, I decided that the audio within my vehicle was probably as good as what was at the venue because it sounded live to me. I thought that, that my system here, I had not paid enough attention to uh, in the car because, man, this is good. It, it, it has retained so much of the quality of wh where I just was. So a few days later when I went out of the car, I thought, you know, I want to relive some of that concert. I put the CD back in and started to listen. I thought, this is awful. What happened to my good sound? And then I realized that part of uh, digital for me, uh, and the reason why people did put up with that, and the reason why they can also put up with compression and different uh, video sources and whatnot, is because our brain is a very sophisticated and great thing. It actually fills in for us. Um, it actually kind of is an interpolator, and the interpolator can fill in where it's blank. And it does that for us. Um, it, I had a memory and my brain was used to the concert. It related and it filled it in when I was in the vehicle going home because it, you know, that's what was there. The reason why A-B tests don't work though is, be, uh, is that same reason. You can't take people and, and put them in and say, okay, whether it's a double blind test or not, and say, okay, here's an A-B, uh, can you tell the difference between this cable or this, or is this digital or not? It, it's, it's unfair uh, comparison, and it's an unfair thing to do. One of the things that happens for me if I listen to uh, a lot of digital, and you know, it doesn't matter sometimes really what it is uh, done at. It doesn't matter if it was a DSD-64 or a uh, 2496 file. It, it, it just seems to matter there's, there's something about how it's been put together and mastered and I'll notice that I get fatigued. I mean, I get fatigued, my brain, I get tired 
when I listen to the music. Now there's other times when I listen to music and I'll listen to things and it energizes me or totally relaxes me. And I know that when I have that, it's as if there is more information and my brain isn't having to, to work as hard. Beyond that, unless you take some things to the absurd, some people probably aren't gonna get it. So I'm gonna do an absurdity and end the video. Uh, also mentioning that there have been lawsuits now filed against uh, Mobile Fidelity. I don't know which one to join. I'm gonna study and um, see which, which one has the best, uh, well, I, I think it has to, to have very good um, things inside it so that it could be successful. So that which I think will be the, the most successful suit, uh, I'll come on and I'll mention it's my opinion, but you know, most of these things are opinions. But this is the absurdity of, of sometimes the, the world that we live in and this argument that they've made because Mobile Fidelity has gone in and, and because they betrayed their listeners, in my opinion, and they betrayed their customers and they betrayed the whole audio, especially high-end audio. Um, I uh, did something bad and I decided that I was gonna take my wife's toothbrush and I thought I'll put it in the toilet. I did it for a week straight. I just kind of put it in the toilet, washed it around and then put it back up. After a week I went to her and I said, geez, honey, I've been putting your toothbrush into the toilet and you didn't notice once. It must be okay to put this in the toilet because you know, you didn't notice. That's absurd, but that's where it kind of needs to go. So, so to, to bring people to as to some of what's going on, it's, it's like inviting a couple over for dinner and you know, they're vegans but you decided you're gonna put some eggs and you're gonna put milk and you're gonna use some, some uh, pork fat and you're even gonna use a little bit of meat. And at the end of the meal, you ask them how it was and when they report back that it was quite delicious, you point your finger and you say, how stupid could you be? You vegans, you, you ain't got anything going. You didn't even know. I put all this stuff in and you didn't know. Or another absurd example, but it helps bring some of this, maybe maybe bring you back to reality of, as to what's going on and how far out uh, MoFi has been in their betrayal is if you had a Jewish friend and uh, you had him over and after the meal, you made fun of him because you said, you know, you thought what you were eating was kosher, <laughs> but I put pork in it and it wasn't kosher. No one ever came in and there was no rabbi had anything to do with this and how, how dumb are you? You just ate unkosher food, which tells me that, you know, Jews shouldn't worry about eating kosher. They're missing the point. The point was is Mobile Fidelity put out a diagram. They put on the top of all of their recordings, original master recording. Now make of that what you will, but I think that they knew they were scared. They absolutely knew that what they were doing was a betrayal. They didn't have any plan apparently to ever come clean. And a lot of people got caught in this and now a lot of people are, are, are getting hurt. Um, anyway, I said I would update this. I hope that uh, you'll subscribe and that you'll be part of my channel. I, I thank you for watching and listening. I understand that your opinion may differ from mine. and. I'm not threatened by that. I think that's fine. Uh, you just need to know that uh, I am an audiophile and I'm not opposed to having or listening to files that are a DSD file. Um, I just wonder why they went to the trouble of putting stuff on vinyl if in fact we could have kept it digital. I have some really good digital DACs and I use them and I use them for streaming. I don't have hardly anything that I get to stream at DSD 256 or 512. Um, it would be nice to have some of this. I assume there's some licensing restrictions or whatnot, but that's really where it should be. I mean, why don't they work with these uh, labels and tell them that we would like to have high res files um, that they put out. I know HD tracks does some, but for the most part, you don't find a DXD or a DSD as they, as they talked about. Uh, I think they are wonderful, but when I think I'm buying that, I think it's worth less. I think it's worth a lot less. I think it's worth $100 less in the case of their one steps. I don't ever want to have to pay $125 ever again for one of these, ever.
It's ridiculous. I don't want this to go down, but but it's probably going to because now you can see I do have a lot of most people. I'm gonna say they, they keep keep them there, but I have records and I love records. I have thousands of them, thousands. I have thousands of CDs. I have lots of digital files. I have lots of different tapes. I love music. I love music. I hope you do too. Thanks.